What is going on, everybody? This is Neil Bell Piano, and welcome to another edition of the Mofobo Network show here on YouTube. And as always, I am very happy and very excited to welcome you guys to this YouTube channel and, you know, my show that, you know, I try to get a video out every week. Uh, some some weeks are tougher than others, especially this past week when we had Easter and, you know, preparing. And also, you know, just it, it's it's tough because we have this quarantine and, and you know, some days are, are tougher than others to, to try to get through. But I'm glad that you guys could take a little bit of time out of your day to, you know, sit around and, and listen to me, you know, ramble on about the wide world of sports. And today we have a very special topic that I want to discuss. It's something that I have uh, near and dear to my heart. And uh, as you can see, I'm wearing a Pittsburgh Pirates uh, shirt. And on the back of it, which you guys obviously can't see, but on the back of it, it is Roberto Clemente, arguably the greatest Pittsburgh Pirates in their entire history, one of the greatest players in baseball history, and certainly in my opinion, the greatest Latino baseball player in you know, the history of the sport. And the reason I bring him up is because of this. First of all, this past Wednesday, uh, the 15th of April, was Jackie Robinson Day. Now, as we know, because of COVID-19 and because of the whole quarantine, Major League Baseball has not begun its season yet. So there is no opportunity for us to see players wear the number 42. And for those of you that don't know, Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier for, you know, you know, black people and black baseball players uh, to play in Major League Baseball. And for what he was able to do, he has been honored throughout, you know, all of Major League Baseball with his number retired by every single team and everything like that. But the topic that I really want to discuss today and the reason, again, why I'm wearing Roberto Clemente's shirt and wearing his number is because I firmly believe that Roberto Clemente should also have his number retired throughout Major League Baseball. Now, people, especially you know my age and even younger, would say, you know, what did Roberto Clemente do that was so significant to the point where people should say that, oh, he should have his number retired? Well, let's first go over his numbers. You know what he, you know, his stats in his, you know, illustrious major league career. He had exactly three thousand career hits. He had exactly three thousand, which which is pretty cool. You know, because we don't get to see that. We we see guys that have like. 3,364 or something like that. It's But he has exactly 3,000 career hits. He was the 1966 National League Most Valuable Player, a four-time National League batting champion, a 12-time Gold Glove winner. Now, if you want to get a perfect representation of Roberto Clemente and how tremendous of a fielder he was, go back to his catch and throw from the 1971 World Series against the Baltimore Orioles where he was out in right field and just made this incredible throw from almost the warning track to get the runner out. I believe he was either going from third or going from home, but it was just an incredible play. And, and you realize that he was just an unbelievable fielder and you could definitely make the case that he is the greatest right fielder and possibly greatest outfielder that we have ever seen defensively in all of Major League Baseball. And Roberto Clemente was also a two-time World Series champion. He was part of the 1960 Pittsburgh Pirates, Pirates when Bill Mazeroski hit the home run in Game 7 to beat the Yankees, you know, the, the, the famous home run that a lot of people know. And he also won the World Series, as I mentioned before, in 1971 with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was the 1971 World Series MVP. He was a 15-time All-Star, which is an incredible feat because there are some other Hall of Famers that have nowhere near the amount of All-Star Game appearances that Roberto Clemente did. He was a first ballot Hall of Famer with 92.3% of the vote uh, in 1973. He was the first Latin American player to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. And he was part, he was playing, his best years were between 1961 and 1972, which people call the dead ball era. And in that you know little span right there, nearly a decade, he batted 331 with a one with a 146 on base plus. He was he had a 377 on base percentage, a 507 slugging percentage, and a 6.71 wins above replacement. Now, obviously wins above replacement is being, you know, you know, looked at now. It wasn't obviously looked at before. And he is the third, he has the third highest wins above replacement in that era. And the only two that have more 
have a higher wins above replacement are Hank Aaron at number one and at number two, Willie Mays. So Roberto Clemente was incredible. He was a five-tool player before the five-tool kind of name became big. This guy could do it all. He could make great great plays in the field. He could just hit the ball. He could hit it for power, hit it for average. He was clutch. He came through in so many different situations. But the re- that's not the reason why I want Roberto Clemente's number to be retired all over Major League Baseball. There is a bigger reason. Roberto Clemente was a humanitarian, and for those of you that don't know what that is, to be specific, a humanitarian is somebody who really just wants to help as so many people as possible, and that was what Roberto Clemente was all about. He came from Puerto Rico, and all he ever wanted to do was to play Major League Baseball and to motivate people, particularly from you know the Latin American countries, from the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Cuba, all those places, and he wanted to motivate them to say, hey, look, this is possible. You can make it. I am a product of that, and you guys can do it if you just work hard enough because people will pay attention. And what Roberto Clemente was able to do was to get people in the United States and in Major League Baseball to take a closer look at these Latin American countries and say, you know what? There is talent out there. And let me tell you, and let me give you a statistic that really proves Roberto Clemente's influence in Major League Baseball when it comes to Latino American baseball players coming and playing in Major League Baseball. 28.5% of Major League Baseball players right now are from international places, so they're from all over the place other than the United States. 220, as of right now, are of Latin American descent, and 18 are from Puerto Rico. So, Right there, you can see that Roberto Clemente gave Major League Baseball another place in this world to look for Major League talent. And nowadays, it's unheard of for a scout not to go to places like that and to say, okay, we have, you know, there are some really good talent here. You look at one team in particular that a lot that that really has in has been you know really big when it comes to you know getting those Latin American talented baseball players is the Los Angeles Dodgers to a point where they still have an academy there where a lot of players go and they kind of play through the Dodgers system and they eventually go and play in the Los Angeles Dodgers you know system you know one guy in particular and this is kind of funny that you know he's obviously not Latin American but because they had that camp, and they still do, he was able to go, was Mike Piazza. Mike Piazza actually had to go over and play in that develop, in that development program to get noticed, and he eventually got noticed and drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers. So you can see how he you know, was able to take advantage of that. But that whole development program would not have happened without Roberto Clemente being able to come over to the United States, play Major League Baseball, play it at a high level, and create such an impact. Because we obviously know about what Jackie Robinson was able to do to get you know black players to come and be able to play in the Major Leagues and be given a fair opportunity. But even at that, at that point, Latin American baseball players, it was even more unheard of for them to come and play in Major League Baseball. Roberto Clemente gave Major League Baseball that type of, you know, opportunity and that type of, you know, availability to go over to those countries and do that. And another thing that really people don't talk about enough is that Roberto Clemente was so proud to be a Puerto, R- a Puerto Rican. He was so unbelievably proud. He talked about it all the time. If you go back to a lot of his interviews that you can see on YouTube and other places, you could see him always referring to it and saying how much he loves, you know, that, you know, you know, being from there and how much he loves, you know, the country itself and how much he wanted to make a difference. There in his last recorded interview, Roberto Clemente said that he believed that God wanted him to be a baseball player because he knew that he could make a huge impact in society, in the sport itself, and also just put a, a, a positive and more noticeable light on those Latin American countries, particularly Puerto Rico. And that was really what Roberto Clemente was all about. All he wanted to do was help others. He taught so many people, even in the United States, 
that they can do it, that they can make a difference in this world, and that all they need to do is just not be selfish, work hard, and do the right thing. And that's what Roberto Clemente was all about. And then, you know, that goes on until even when he died and he was you know, unfortunately killed in that horrific plane crash when he was trying to ship supplies and take supplies to Nicaragua after they had their, um, again, I'm, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was um, an earthquake that, that he had, that they had. So Roberto Clemente really, really wanted to just help everybody. He wanted to make as big of an influence on people as you possibly could. And, and that's really what it was. And so I look at it and I say to myself, you know what? Roberto Clemente made just a big of an impact in baseball for a certain type of baseball player as Jackie Robinson did. Now, one argument that people will try to throw at me is say this. Well, if Roberto Clemente's number gets retired, then why don't we retire someone like Babe Ruth's number all over baseball? Or, you know, other players like that. You know, there's so many players with numbers that we could easily retire. Why not the first, you know, 10 numbers of the Yankees all over baseball? Because all of them made tremendous impact. Why not Mickey Mantle? You know, what? like stuff like that. Well, let me let me put this out here. And I, and I don't feel fully comfortable talking about it but I feel like it needs to be explained. Throughout the history of Major League Baseball, there has been one race that has always been there, and that is Caucasian or white. That's clear as daylight. Everybody knows that. It is obvious. You can go back even to just the beginning. It's, it's white people. It's Caucasians, you know, that were, you know, the real dominant race, okay? Once you started to see black players trying to get into playing Major League Baseball, you started to notice that there were other, you know, people of different races, of different color, wanting to be equal to the to white people and Caucasians. That's really, you know, what that was all about. And that's what Jackie Robinson was really about. He wanted to get to the Major Leagues and show people of, of, of color that, you know what, you can make it. It's possible. You just have to put your mind to it. And yes, I am not taking away from anything Jackie Robinson has done because everything that he's done is super significant to the game of baseball and to the game and to sports in general. Because even during that time, it was tough for players of color to be able to compete at high levels in any sport. One sport that I can think of in particular was football. And you have to remember, this was during the, the civil rights you know, movements and things like that. And Jackie Robinson, you know, his impact allowed sports in different, you know, different sports basically to start to say, you know what, you know, the, the players of color, there is a lot of talent out there in those, you know, small black schools and other places like that. There is talent. We just have to go out and look. And it did take a while for certain positions in football, like middle linebacker and quarterback um, for a black man to be able to play at that, to play at those positions, but Jackie Robinson did help make people see that you know what these these players of color they are just as good as the players that we have now that are excuse the expression white, and that's how big of an impact that Jackie Robinson had. When you look at Roberto Clemente, it's the same thing. It's the same situation. The only difference is that Roberto Clemente represented the Latinos and Puerto Ricans and 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 ever and you know and he represented all of Latin America by doing what he did in Major League Baseball. He made Major League Baseball say, you know what? Jackie Robinson allowed us to see players of color and black players in particular and, and had us realize, you know what? They have a lot of talent. When we look at Roberto Clemente, it's kind of the same thing. We're, we're kind of back in the same situation and say, you know what? Roberto Clemente has allowed us to say, you know, there is a lot of talent in Puerto Rico, in Cuba, in, in El Salvador, in, you know, all these places. It allows us to realize that there is a lot of talent over there. And we have to go and look because everybody at that time wanted to find the next Roberto Clemente. That's that's really what 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 those scouts and those teams 
uh, during that time were trying to do. They were trying to find the next one, and that's really something uh, phenomenal. And I'm not saying that Roberto, that uh, Jackie Robinson didn't, you know, have a big Im- have a huge impact in you know society because he really did. But Roberto Clemente was tremendous because he got an entire sport to see several other regions around the world and and see that, that they have talent. And that eventually led to Major League Baseball starting to go to other regions like China and Japan and many other countries around the world. And you can look, and there is plenty of them. The best way to look, go watch the World Baseball Classic. Anytime that we have the World Baseball Classic, right there you can see the amount of Latino American teams and the amount of you know in the the amount of players that there are there and the amount of talent that's there just look at the Puerto Rican team you know the one guy that really stands out to me actually there's two guys uh, on the Puerto Rican team and that is Javier Baez of the Chicago Cubs and Francisco Lindor and those two guys are two of the best players in Major League Baseball right now and they're of Puerto Rican descent they're from Puerto Rico and if it wasn't for Roberto Clemente we would never see those players, and we would never get the opportunity to realize how good a region like that can be. And now, Major League Baseball goes there on a daily basis to scout players, and also in the, the, the DR, and also in you know Cuba and other places like that, they, and Venezuela. They, they go to places like that now because Roberto Clemente proved that it is possible that a man from that those areas can become a huge success in sports and and a a difficult sport like Major League Baseball. And I know that there is a lot of petitions out there, and there's also a Twitter account that says hashtag retire21. And I'm fully for it. And I really do think, and I know I'm not the only one. I know ESPN put out a poll about two years ago, and there was about 77 or 78% of the voters said Roberto Clemente's number should absolutely be retired because you're talking about an entire race that was defined by one single player and the amount of incredible feats that he was able to accomplish, not just on the field, but off the field. Now, I want to show you guys something very special that is in my house, and uh, it's my father's. In April of 2001, sorry, I'm trying to lift this here, my father, who is a big Pittsburgh Pirate fan, and the reason he became a big Pittsburgh Pirate fan is primarily because of Roberto Clemente. So again, you want to understand an impact that Roberto Clemente had. My dad got a plaque, as you can see right here, that actually the real plaque is at PNC... Uh, field or PNC Field, I think, it's, I think that's like a PNC Park in Pittsburgh. It, it's actually there, and this this one says Roberto Clemente, a great player, a better man. And right there, that simple that simple you know sentence right there just proves to you the type of person and the type of player that Roberto Clemente was. He was a great player, no question about it. As I labeled off the you know accolades that he was able to accomplish. But what made him really special and what made him so beloved by so many people is that he was just a great man. A man that wanted to do nothing but help people and to make a difference in someone's lives. And he has made a difference in so many people's lives. So much so that they actually have an award now, the Roberto Clemente Award for you know the best humanitarian, a player who is given back to the community. And that's a big award for a lot of people. A lot of players talk about it, and it's presented every year at the World Series, and you always get to see Roberto Clemente's family, and you get to hear stories all the time. And that, to me, is phenomenal. It really is. And the amount of stories that you hear from players even now talk about the significance of Roberto Clemente just goes to show again how much of an impact that that man really had. And again, it just proves why his number should be t- retired and he should be honored and respected the same way that Jackie Robinson is because he made that big of an impact. And I really hope that Major League Baseball, in you know, sooner rather than later, comes to, the, comes to grips and say, you know what? We really should do this because I think that, you know, his legend is somewhat slipping away because not a lot of people are talking about it as much as they should. And we're not honoring him enough. 
you know, we do have this award and that's great, but I think there needs to be more that's done. So Roberto Clemente is a man that just wanted to do anything and everything to make as big of a difference in millions of people's lives as possible and to just help. And that's what it was. And the biggest example, obviously, is his decision to fly over to Nicaragua with those million, you know, thousands of supplies that he had to try to help people in need. And unfortunately, he was taken away from us in that tragic plane crash. And, you know, they, they spent three days trying to find him and they could never find his body. But right then and there, it just proves that Roberto Clemente was a man that put everybody above himself. He realized he had God-given ability. He was going to use it properly. He was going to find ways to make an impact both on the field as well as, you know, off the field and more particularly off the field. And, and so, you know, all in all, I would say that Roberto Clemente's numbers should absolutely be retired all over Major League Baseball. His impact is just as great as Jackie Robinson's was. And Roberto Clemente, he was a great player, but he was also a great man. And with that being said, that is going to do it on this edition of the MoFobo Network. As always, thank you so much for listening in. It means a lot to me that you spend some time out of your day to, you know, listen to me talk about these type of topics. This one in particular, you know, meant a lot to me. I am a Pirates fan uh, because of my dad and, and learning about Roberto Clemente and obviously never got the chance to see him play live or even, you know, meet him. But watching, you know, a lot of highlights and also hearing all of the wonderful stories, it just helped me to come up with the research that I was able to come up with and make my case as to why I think Roberto Clemente's number should be tied. So thank you very much for listening in. And if you want to check out more of the show, as always, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new, if you're passing through. Welcome to the Mofobo Network show. You know, stick around because we have a lot of great topics coming up in the future. I, I promise you that. So like and subscribe. Um, make sure you also subscribe to and listen to the Mofobo Network podcast that is on Anchor.fm or it's also on Google, Spotify, or wherever you you can get your podcast. Just search my name, Neil Villapiano or Mofobo Network, and you will find it. So, you know, check out that as well because it's very similar to my YouTube channel. We just talk about topics for about a half hour. We've had a couple really good guests on, uh, guys like from, you know, ESPN 610 to, you know, big, big name guys, you know, who are, who are in, you know, the world of soccer and other sports like that. We have other great guests coming on as well. So again, make sure you, you like and subscribe and check out the Mofobo Network podcast. Also, for those of you that would like to know, I also have my book that is being on that's being sold on Amazon called J E T S Pain 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 The Pain and Ecstasy. Now let's forget about the ecstasy of being a New York Jets fan. So if you're a fan of the Jets, if you're a football fan, if you know somebody that's a football fan or a Jets fan, or if you just want to support me, go check that out. You know, please go, you know, buy the book and, and let me know what you think. It's for the price of $19.69. And if you're a Jets fan or a football fan, you may realize why I chose that specific price. But go check it out. You can get it hard copy or you can get it as an ebook as well. Either one is fine. So, so please check that out. Make sure to also follow me on social media. I'll have the links down in the description. But also follow me here on Twitter at the NVP show. That's T H E. NVPSHOW. And also make sure to follow me on Instagram at NVPQB11. So thank you all very much for tuning in to the Mofobo Network. And as I always say to end every episode, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter how much you know struggles you may have or, or whatever, just always remember when you wake up in the morning to kick some Mofobo. So thank you all very much. My name is Neil Villapiano, and we will catch you guys in the next episode. Have a great day. Be safe. Love you all.